59 year old female. Um, she's been having pain in the right shoulder for about a year. She has a large calcific density. She's had a lot of cortisone injections. She had one um, about a year ago, which lasted for six months. And then she had another one repeated about two months ago, which kind of wore off. And then she had two cortisone injections essentially over the past week. Uh, the first one didn't help and the second one is starting to help her, but she still has significant pain and she really has almost no active flexion and abduction. Can you show me how much you can raise? Like forward? She's quite, you know, stuck. We're going to go ahead and look at the supraspinatus tendon in long axis. Here you can see the biceps tendon in the rotator cuff interval. You can appreciate the superior facet of the greater tuberosity, that very prominent rounded facet where the anterior aspect of the supraspinatus inserts. And now we're going a little bit posterior. You can see this very, very large calcific density that's taking up much of the supraspinatus tendon. It's going almost all the way to the surface of the supraspinatus tendon. You can appreciate the humeral head. And here we are at the middle facet of the greater tuberosity. Now we're gonna look at the supraspinatus tendon in short access. You see the biceps tendon in the interval in cross-sectional view. And here we're going posteriorly and you can appreciate the extent of this calcific density. How it essentially spans, again, much of the supraspinatus tendon and is going posteriorly and going into the infraspinatus tendon. Again, here we're looking at that very large calcific density with shadowing underneath that. You can still appreciate a little bit of the humeral head, it appears. Again, here we are just going posterior. Instead of seeing that tire on a wheel appearance, we're just seeing this very large calcific density. Now we're gonna go posterior, looking at the infraspinatus tendon, which looks fairly normal at this view. Uh, here we're going all the way laterally towards its insertion on the middle facet of the greater tuberosity. And here as we go a little bit up and I think anterior, we can appreciate this very large calcific density. And again, I think this is all one density going from the supraspinatus into the infraspinatus. And now we're going to get the infraspinatus tendon in a short axis view. You can appreciate the infraspinatus tendon on the left. Hard to appreciate the teres minor in this view. And then I believe we're going a little bit up and anterior, which is a little bit out of sync with the video on the right, but again, you can appreciate this very large calcific density that's continuous with the density we saw in the supraspinatus tendon, in my opinion. Now we're starting the procedure. We're using an 18 gauge needle. We're going in with 1% lidocaine. So we're just trying to pop through that calcific shell and just keep the needle within that density during the whole procedure. So here you can see the needle tip essentially tickling that surface of the calcific density. And now we're just trying to get in. Here we are, we're taking off the lidocaine and we're putting on our first syringe of normal saline. And you wanna have about four or five of these normal saline syringes ready to go. And here you can appreciate the needle essentially right within the midst of this calcific density and we're starting the uh, barbitage part of the procedure. What's interesting in this case is most of the saline seem to kind of travel within this calcific density and outside of it into the subacromial space. So there may have been some cracks perhaps within that calcific density that it traveled through. Here you can appreciate the saline essentially kind of trickling throughout the whole calcific density into the subacromial space and perhaps even into the supraspinatus tendon. And actually during this procedure, I kind of went in and out of the calcific density with the needle several times, trying to target different spots of it to try to get as much calcium out as possible. And now we're doing the subacromial cortisone injection, which is really necessary during these procedures to avoid um, significant pain as the calcium crystals are quite irritating to the shoulder. No lifting more than two or three pounds for the next three or four weeks. Okay. Here you can appreciate some of the calcium that we barbitaged out. And here we are two weeks post procedure. Okay, so she is roughly two weeks into a calcific barbitage on the right shoulder, very large calcific density um, that we barbitaged. I believe we got most of that calcium out. We injected a touch of cortisone because she had a lot of cortisone injections in the shoulder prior to that. Uh, and how do you feel? How's the right shoulder? Good, a little better, you know, like uh, 90%. 90% better. Can we see your motion? Because before yes, she really can, couldn't move I the shoulder move. at all. Let's see your motion. I can move, you see. Try to keep your elbows straight and just go up slow. Wow. Wow, she couldn't move it at all. Okay, and down. Good. It's a little, when I do this to here, it's a little, um, it's a little painful. A little painful. A little, but not too much. A little pain. But I can do it. Wow, and go down. You know, I can do it. Now let's see that go. You go know, back. because. 
before you know I can do it. I couldn't do it. I you remember struggling. that I was like this, I could. Yeah, you were but struggling. now you know I can do this. It means you go up now. Awesome. And go like that. Crank it out. Go behind your back. This is a little hard. Hard. Yeah. That's great. 